Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the news from Shuruq TV. Today's stories include The Cabinet warns of breaching lockdown measures Interior Ministry Police will enforce laws strictly and decisively The Foreign Minister is optimistic about Sudan's removal from the terror list The Council of Ministers has warned that the government will strictly implement the measures announced earlier by the concerned authorities against anyone who violates orders, adding that the violators will be confronted with the necessary firmness and strength. The cabinet said in a statement issued Sunday, while our entire country is busy fighting the coronavirus pandemic and providing all its potentials to defend the health of Sudanese citizens, news comes about a political group belonging to the defunct re regime, planning to hold gatherings. The statement concluded the security of the country and the people is top priority of the state. The police forces on Sunday affirmed that it will deal firmly and strictly with any group and under any name in accordance with the emergency law, the health emergency measures and the preventive arrangements imposed by the Khartoum State Security Committee. The police uh, statement expressed confidence that the citizens will understand the reasons behind this legal warning, which is supported by the directives of the judicial system. According to the precautionary measures imposed by Khartoum State Security Committee and the directives of the Higher Committee for Health Emergencies, imposed the lockdown and banned the gatherings, the police forces affirms that, according to the dangerous developments concerning the spread of the coronavirus pandemic, it will not allow, under any name, the gatherings that violate the measures taken by the state's security committee. The Minister of Culture and Information and Government spokesman Faisal Muhammad Saleh announced that the security authorities have begun imposing penalties against violators of the rules and procedures of health lockdown set by the Higher Health Emergency Committee, indicating that the authorities were compelled to do so as a result of the indifference of many citizens to the regulations and the exploitation of exceptions in a manner that violates the objectives of the lockdown. He indicated that the movement within the neighborhoods through the granted exemptions continued in a disgraceful way and there was a widespread movement of cars and transportation showing that the authorities started to take measures against violators and to prevent these violations. The Sudanese Federal Minister Akram Ali Tom has announced 59 cases of COVID-19 reported nationwide, including three deaths out of previous cases, bringing the total to 592 confirmed cases as death toll to 41 in compared to 52 recoveries. Meanwhile, Minister of Health said that coronavirus extends to 14 states in Sudan as follows. Khartoum 521, Jazeera 24, Sinar 10, North Kurdufan 8, Gadarif and River Nile 6 each, South Darfur 5, West Kurdufan 4, North Darfur 3, East Darfur 2, and one case in White Nile, Central Darfur, and North State. The Prime Minister, Dr. Abdullah Hamadok, pledged to work for the advancement of the Sudanese press and the care of freedom of expression in the country, noting that despite the progress made now, it was without the ambition of the revolution government that was founded on freedom, peace and justice. The Sudanese Journalists Network called on the state to introduce media institutions based on the values and the goals of the revolution. The SJN, in a statement issued marking the World Press Day, called for establishment of information and media institutions similar to the Glorious Revolution, referring that the press of the defunct regime during the past month exploited the atmosphere of freedoms and stabbed the revolution in the back. The network called for preservation of the rights of the journalists in the provision of good work environment, besides giving them a financial return that meets their needs and respect their humanity.
Sudan's foreign minister, Asma Abdullah, said she is optimistic about Sudan's removal from the terror list, despite the obstacles raised by the American administration. Abdullah was speaking in a talk show at the Sudan TV within the government efforts to improve communication with Sudanese people and to explain what has been achieved in the program of the transitional period. She said that the U.S. officials insist that the removal is a process to carry out, not a simple decision to make. Furthermore, Washington says this political process requires congregational approval, some requirements that must be met in addition to financial compensations to the victims of the terror attacks, she added. So there are always things that they mention and say that they have not been fulfilled. But despite that, there is talk that things will reach their end and that these sanctions will be lifted. Let us be optimistic, she emphasized. The director of the Sudanese Mineral Resources Company, Mubarak Ardol, has issued a decision on appointment of seven geologists as directors of the company's offices in the states. The seven directors of the company's offices in the states are Engineer Geologist Baha Adin Nimir for North Kordofan, Idris Suleiman for West Kordofan, Salah al Sheikh for the Blue Nile, Mu'tasim Ishaq for the Northern State, Ali Hassan al Hussein for the Red Sea. Abdul Majid Anwar Ibrahim for Gadarf State and Ali Tajuddin Al Hilo for Kassel State. And now we remind you with the headlines. The cabinet warns of breaching lockdown measures. Interior Ministry police will enforce laws strictly and decisively. Foreign Minister is optimistic about Sudan removal from terror list. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was everything for today. Thank you for following.